Having to pump out an iterative game on a semi-yearly basis must be a monumental task. Trying to figure out what new feature to work on for the next title, all while updating to new assets borders on lunacy, especially for such a small studio like Monster Games. And I mention this because I come into SRX the game understanding what size studio and what the game is supposed to be. Now, SRX The Game is the third title in the Tony Stewart universe. Let's just call it that. I mean, what else would you call it? And that's from Monster Games. So per usual, this was dropped on everyone rather quickly with not a long buildup or hype cycle of announcements. And truth be told, I wasn't terribly excited for this based on my previous experience with All-American Racing and All-Star Circuit of Champion Sprint Cars. My time with SRX The Game is a bit more positive than the prior two iterations, but I'm still left wishing the studio had more time to improve upon the foundation laid. SRX still carries over a lot of my issues, and that's not to say that the game is absolutely horrible, in fact it's not, but it's not that great either. I think a good portion of the audience that SRX The Game is aimed at, which in my eyes is a more casual audience primarily targeted consoles, they will find something fun here to drive. SRX The Game is primarily focused on the new real-world series formed by retired NASCAR superstar driver and owner Tony Stewart alongside retired NASCAR crew chief and owner extraordinaire Ray Everham. The game follows the same basic principles of the last two games, so I'm not going to get heavy in the weeds about all of the options and the structure of the title. Now, I primarily play this game with a wheel and pedal set, and SRX does a nice job of automatically recognizing consumer-grade products in that regard. I still wish there was a more thorough way of tuning the brake pedal though, because just like in the last titles, it's way too strong, and it needs some sort of an actual sensitivity slider rather than a slider that just determines how soon you get to full break. And since we're kind of in the options area, there are a bevy of audio sliders available for you, as well as a few limited visual options for PC users. Uh, speaking of PC users though, there's no FOV slider and mouse control here, well there is none. But we do, in place of no FOV slider, we do get a really nice dash cam, so that at least works, and there's an option to take off motion blur as well, because I hate motion blur. Speaking about motion blur though, there's something that happens on track that looks very bizarre, and toggling motion blur on and off doesn't really fix this very small shaking effect that can occur, and that only happens on track. Mainly this is at the very beginning of a race, or where you're getting ready for like the green flag, or going through corners on the track. The camera shake option has no effect on this either. It's very bizarre. It almost makes me feel like SRX is suffering from a frame pacing issue. But that can also be mistaken for frame drops, and in fact, both of these, I don't even think is what's happening with the game. I think there's some sort of simulated vibration that's going on, but it's really hard to diagnose, and at the end of the day, who really knows? Because my frame counter tells me I'm not dropping frames, and I really don't think it's an actual frame pacing issue. So there's something going on here visually that just doesn't work, and I wish I, wish I could say what it is so that they could fix it. With that little annoyance aside, visuals are attractive and pleasing to the eye, especially when the sun starts to set and then transition into nighttime. The main appeal of this game is the SRX cars, even though there is another new class, which is the stadium trucks. And far and away, the SRX cars on the licensed pavement ovals are the absolute brilliant spot in this game. The SRX cars have this incredible balance of being accessible to drive but challenging to master and while racing these cars on the short pavement ovals, I noticed that I felt connected to the car. I had an understanding of the car's feedback through the, well, it's got some canned effects going on which is not surprising and I don't really expect more than that in the force feedback through the wheel, but also the on-screen visual cues give me an excellent understanding of what the car is doing and you can couple that with an impressive sense of speed, one of the very few titles that I feel actually gets a nice sense of speed while driving. 
There's enough detail here in how the cars drive that they give a great sense of authenticity to the driving experience. While we're not full on simulation here, you cannot just flat foot it and hammer it around the track. So the SRX cars are great on the pavement oval and to round out that great experience, we've actually got some pretty good AI on the pavement ovals. I'm very being very specific when I say on the pavement ovals. They put on great battles with you and other AI as well as running at least a couple of different lines to the turns, if not more. But there is one minor flaw I found on the pavement and in fact, it happens all across the board on the dirt as well, is when the AI spins, it just looks unnatural. Kind of like someone just grabbed the car and quickly face it the wrong direction instead of having a more natural look to their mistake. But that really is kind of nitpicking, just a small detail. In fact, the SRX cars alone on pavement make me wish that Monster Games would get involved with, I don't know, let's say the Cars Tour or the Southwest Tour or something like that and give us a proper late model or super late model games because we're getting things in here that we don't normally get as far as the licensed tracks like Slinger, which I didn't even know was an actual track, but it's like this really small, tight, banked, probably quarter or three-eighths mile. I'm going to guess it's like a quarter mile track. I don't remember off the top of my head, but we also get Lucas Oil. Uh, then we get the licensed dirt tracks as well as Knoxville. And we also get Bristol. Uh, let's see, we have Nashville, and I'm with missing one other track. I'll put it up on the screen. But being that they drive so well on the, the pavement side, I can only imagine what it would be like to get some more licensed pavement short tracks and just give us some sort of late model or super late model game. You know, if they do that, I am in because I have an absolute blast racing these SRX cars on this type of a track. On dirt, the SRX cars themselves don't suffer too bad, but the AI really ruins the experience when it comes to the dirt side. And it's a lot of it has to do with the restarts. In fact, this is the case for all of the dirt classes. When you start on the outside line, you just get screwed. Like, a lot. You lose a ton of positions. A minimum of three. And sometimes I've lost eight spots, not doing anything different than I had been doing during the race. You just can't keep up with them while you're on the outside. Now, again, this will be on the higher difficulty levels. I never, in fact, I never went lower than 99, and I typically was running at the highest difficulty level possible. And I also chose the tight spacing for lining the cars up when coming to the green flag. When you do this, it is like there is a balancing problem. And since we're kind of in this area, if you're at the end of the race, you can also see some sort of AI boost happen on dirt, or maybe like the cushion wears out. I. I can't be sure what's going on here because the track color doesn't change and you really need the track color to change to kind of give you an idea of where the moisture is in the track. I'm not saying that they have to do like real time updates, but there, if there could be some sort of variation just to let you know where to run, it would be incredibly helpful as far as like the lighter dirt is where the slicker part of the track and the darker dirt is where the tacky parts of the track. And they kind of try to do this, but it, it doesn't seem to ever change in between sessions. And if it does, it's not visually changing so you know where to run. So we got that out of the way. Let's circle back around to how the actual dirt cars themselves drive. And I think the most improved here from prior titles is the 305 Sprint Car which it really runs like a 410 wing sprint car. I mean, that's what I raced. I know what those cars are gonna feel like. These quote unquote 305s are incredibly fast in the game. They're not the easiest thing to control. And I'm actually pretty surprised these are the lowest tier. These are the starter cars for your career mode. And I know this is a game and I know this isn't pure simulation, but I've just never seen a 305 non-wing sprint car ever get anywhere close to the speeds that it's reaching in this game. Now, my guess here is that the 305s initially at the proper speeds probably felt boring to drive. But my argument against that would be that's because your AI isn't done well enough to provide really good racing. And if the cars felt a little bit more like sprint cars, it wouldn't seem so boring. So they up the speeds. It's not a huge deal. They're fun to drive and they're better than I remember them being in the first game, 
but it still doesn't quite feel right either. There's no lateral bite to the right rear until you get all the way to the cushion, so you can't make different lines. It's 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 gives you a decent idea, but it's still missing something in the physics department. Now, when you figure out how to run the cushion, it's going to feel like you've got cheat mode enabled almost. The feeling you get from the cushion, the car laying in, trying to pull the front end back over towards the cushion, you know, to the right, away from the inside and towards the outside fence, and you having to be really on top of it, moving your hands back and forth. It's probably the best implementation of a cushion slash curb that I have ever felt in any game or sim, including iRacing. It's just not matched in any other regard. So even though it might be over exaggerated a little, it gives you a really good idea of what it's like to try and run the outside against a monster curb. And when you hit it right, you fly around the track. I don't think some of the cushion lines for some of the tracks are beneficial or their curve around the corners is not a natural line that you would run so sometimes it makes it incredibly difficult to run the outside but there are some tracks that get it right and when you hit it right <laughs> it really is fun you have a fun time running the outside especially when you're blowing by guys on the inside that you were struggling to get by when you were running low so it's just fun they did a great job on the cushion moving on to the stadium trucks and the late models as far as i'm concerned they have too much front tire grip so that when you start to counter steer, they just immediately start to take off for the outside of the track towards the fence. When I was helping with the development of dirt in iRacing, we ran across the same thing. When the front tires had too much grip, it was very difficult to catch that slide. Maybe it's not what it is, but to me, it seems like the front tires have too much grip. The SRX car doesn't seem to suffer from this quite as bad. You do have to be aware of it because every once in a while it'll happen on dirt, but for the most part, the SRX car isn't that bad. You know, I think if you've never played the first two games or you really want to race the SRX cars, this might be right up your alley. Again, I think this is aimed towards more of, you know, a console slash casual player. Uh, I'm not sure I'd really recommend this to anyone that has played one of the first two games, especially the last game, the All-American Racing one. And I also really wouldn't recommend it to anyone who just wants to race the dirt stuff. If you're on the console, or if you're on PC and you don't want to pay for iRacing, uh, and you don't find R-Factor 1 really engaging with the dirt stuff, I'd buy last year's All-American Racing. It's... $10 cheaper than the new SRX game, or you can just wait for a fairly good sale. In closing, without some significant improvements to the dirt experience in future Monster Games titles, I'd like to see them shift gears away from the dirt and do pavement only. Do a late model game, do a super late model game, and that's because the SRX cars in this game are so much fun to drive. They are incredibly fun to drive, whether it be alone, just making laps, or with the AI, that whole package. That could have been the game all in itself. And I would have recommended this all over the place. Like, that core experience of the SRX cars on those, what is it, four pavement ovals is so good. It just makes me want them to do something else with it that's a more fully fleshed out game. And those are my thoughts on SRX the game. Hey, if you end up liking this video, please click the like button and subscribe if you haven't, if you've watched, you know, one or more videos from me. In fact, do that for any YouTuber because subscribing really, really helps out the channels. So again, thank you all so much for watching. You guys have been great. I've been Strange. Take care. I will catch you in the next video.